What is good, y'all? It's your boy AJB.IMG. Bring you guys back another quick video today. Today, I'm going to do a highly requested video. So, if you guys have any other questions based on this video today, let me know. I'll make another specific video regarding that specific part. But I wanted to make this video today specifically to address some of the people that had some questions just regarding some of the mods that have been done to my 2012 Genesis 5.0. Obviously, you guys know that the car is tuned on E85. Um, but you guys maybe have not seen just all the in-depth mods. It's not a crazy mod list that's done to the car, but I did want to kind of break down some of the mods that I've done, maybe give you guys a little bit of review on what I think about some of the parts that I do have on the car. Um, so if you guys decide to either, you know, mod your car, you'll have a reference point, or if you decide to buy specific parts, you kind of have an idea about, you know, what the quality of the parts are. So without further ado, let's hop right into the video. What is good, guys? We are under the hood. So I will go over very quickly, as I stated, some of the mods that I have on the car, what I think of them. Just a quick review. We'll keep this under 10 minutes. My, my, my uh, camera doesn't have too much battery, so I want to make sure I get this in for you guys relatively quickly. So if I'm talking fast, it's because my camera might die and I don't feel like pulling out my GoPro. First mod that we're going to go over on the car is this weapon racing intake. Cost about, I think, between four to 450. Very similar to the Geptune intake, although his has numbers that are attached to it. Again, I can't vouch for how much power it's gonna give the car. I'd say any intake in this case that's aftermarket will probably give it an extra five, at least five horsepower. But I think one of the big caveats with all these intakes is that, you know, I don't care if you buy this intake. Well, and first of all, this is one of the first intakes that I saw uh, before he even came out with his intake. But getting back to what I was saying, I don't care if you buy a $5 million intake or a $5 intake, right? One of the big things slash caveats is that you need to make sure that the intake is clamped on correctly, right? I don't care if it's this intake or his intake. I've noticed that a lot of people that have these intakes, they end up falling off, right? So it doesn't really matter if you're spending a ton of money on an intake, if it's literally falling off and you're seeping air from your throttle body to your intake. So make sure when you buy an intake, you're buying high quality, non-perforated clamps. I go to West Marine out here, which has excellent clamps. It's a boating shop. So obviously they are, you know, top notch, top selection in terms of their clamps because people can't die on their boats. They need to make sure that those clamps are working perfectly and make sure the thing is clamped on right, right? You want a non-perforated clamp, four, four inch clamp to go straight onto that throttle body and you should be good. I'll be able to provide maybe a little bit more numbers in terms of just, you know, how the intake performs on the car specifically when I get the car dynoed, but that is the first model on the car that I'll go, that I'll go over. The second model on the car that I'll go over with you guys is just this 85 millimeter throttle body. The stock throttle body on this car is 82 millimeters. I purchased a second used throttle body and had it sent to a machine shop and they ported it to 85 millimeters and I slapped them on the car. So far, this throttle body has been performing pretty well. I feel a lot more acceleration in the car. The car feels like it breathes a bit better and it feels performance wise much smoother. Um, but as I said, even just, you know, jumping on the gas from a stop, you can feel that the jump, the acceleration is much greater. So I highly recommend getting an 85 millimeter throttle body if you guys don't have one on your car. And again, I don't, I haven't had any issues in terms of throwing any codes or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, hopefully damaging your engine. Third mod is going to be this IOT real relocation sensor kit, keeping those um, MAF sensors, I mean, MAF temperatures uh, normalized so that they are not spiking to 200, 300 or whatever degrees that it thinks that it is. The motor um, is is firing at back there. So, so far, again, as you can see in my previous video, I uploaded uh, just an install of this if you guys have questions. It is located back there, as I said, but have had any issues with it. It is winter time here in California, so it's a little bit colder, it's a little bit chillier, but weather's still pretty good, still sunny out. So I'm running the car pretty hard, so no matter what, what weather it is, honestly, if I'm running it during the day, it's gonna be really hot. And I haven't had any bog down issues or any major challenges. So definitely recommend getting that. I think it's a $90 sensor on his website at geptune.com. So check him out and go support the man. That's, a, that's the third mod. So we've gone over the intake, we've gone over the throttle body, we've gone over the uh, relocation, IAT relocation sensor. Fourth is gonna be this ultra racing strut bar. Now to accompany this ultra racing strut bar, I also have 
an ultra racing subframe brace i have two of those under the car you cannot see them but they're in the back they're under the car these braces although their customer service is absolute trash in terms of like answering questions i highly recommend the ultra racing strut bar and the subframe brace as far as handling for the car the car feels like it handles like a miata you know so it handles extremely well i have no complaints if i want to do donuts if i'm sliding around corners you need this you definitely need this brace if you want to feel like you are in charge of this giant 4,400 pound or however 4,000 pound car. Highly recommend again, as I said, the strut, the strut bar as well as the subframe braces that I have. That's going to be the fourth mod on the car. Fifth mod is going to be this oil catch can. I have two of them. So as you can see, I have a setup for two. One on the driver's side, as you can see here, going into the intake and the crankcase. Then I also have one on the passenger side. Definitely recommend if you guys have these direct injected motors that you definitely get oil catch cans because the blow by and the build up in your valves is not going to be great. So in order to reduce that, I definitely highly recommend you getting both of these. There's not a lot of videos on how to install these catch cans. So if you guys have questions or you want me to go into more depth on the setup, um, that is pretty much it. I highly recommend, as I said, quality over quantity. So... These are cheap. These are like $35 clamps. People are going Bob the Builder, as I said, you know, making their own catch cans, doing all this extra labor from Home Depot. It's not necessary. Just go on Amazon, buy the catch cans. They're very cheap. I think these are Evo Energy. As I said, they're 35 bucks. But make sure you get some quality hoses and clamps. And the hoses that I have are 3 8 Don't use the hoses that come with it. You know, buy additional upgraded hoses, um, either for oil or whatever. Um, that as long as they're 3 8 inch, you'll be good. And these are much more high quality. They can, you know, withstand the temperature under the car. And they're going to be much better than the hoses that come with it. The hoses that come with these catch cans are absolute garbage. So that's pretty much it in terms of what's under the hood and what is under the car. I'm going to be doing a couple more upgrades on the car. I know somebody asked me, hey, you know, what is your ESC button? This is what my ESC button for my traction control. That's what it looks like. And ideally, I think that's pretty much it. I don't have too much more on the car. The car is quick, very quick for what it is. I mean, I have the spare tire removed from the back. So I have a couple things in the car, obviously, because I'm just traveling around with my cameras and things like that. So it's a little bit heavier. Uh, but other than that, I mean, with, with the stuff removed from the trunk, the car moves very, very well. Uh, very, very smooth ride. And I highly recommend it if you guys are looking to purchase the car. Let's see, I don't think there's anything else that I have on the car. I might install a transmission temperature gauge so I can gauge just how hot that transmission is getting. And then I have a couple more mods I'm gonna be actually doing tomorrow to the car. But I'm not gonna waste any more of your time yapping away. Hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. All right, it's free. Like the video, it's free. Share the video, it's free. Come on, support your boy, you know. And um, yeah, I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. If you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them down in the comments below. And I answer every question in the comments that I possibly can. I'm going to catch you all later, man. Uh, deuces.